because it's TikTok, is is unoriginal content like okay? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fucking TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I yeah, mean, I everything there is fucking copied. I kid you not. Almost ninety five percent of TikTok is copied. I mean, if you want to fucking argue about it, let's argue, bro. I can debate about it all day, dog. Look on TikTok. You're going to see the same fucking shit all the fucking time. Who makes it better? That's the real question, dog. I'm an actor. I'm not a writer. Now, what happens when you put a bank robber on a platform where you could profit off of stealing people's content? Now you give that bank robber 2.9 million followers because of the content that he stole, and now you're looking at a TikTok content creator named Numain, who isn't a bank robber but can pass as one with the way he steals people's content with little to no credit given to the owner, a person who still profits off the work that someone else did for him. Now, I know I'm pretty late to the cancel Numain party, but that's okay because for some reason, it didn't work. Numain, now known as Kane on TikTok, has been in the hot seat for quite a while now and for good reasoning. Kane is a content creator that steals other people's content for his own personal profit. Now you might think that it's just TikTok and many other creators do the same exact thing, but I'd say that Kane does it a little different. See with TikTok, there is a feature where you could look at the sounds on the video you are watching, and from there it will show the original owner of the sound or the first person to make the video. Kane goes to that sound feature, copies the original owner's work, saves the video to his phone, and then re-uploads it to the platform with very little changes to the original video to make it seem like he is the original owner of the sound or video, which then spawns other creators using his new sound, which in turn gives Kane more notoriety, even though he wasn't the person to create that sound or make it as popular. And well, for the people that he stole the content from, they lose out on the chance to elevate their own platform with Kane not giving those content creators credits throughout the video, not in the bio for the video, and very rarely in the comments of that video. And even after multiple content creators called Kane out for his lack of crediting the original source, he still continues to not give credit to this day, with his only reasoning for it being that it's TikTok and nobody really cares about somebody copying the content. Even after people had called him out for it, he would actually credit some of these original creators, but would then slowly stop crediting the original owners of the sound or the video that he got inspired by, and then would slowly go back to the same practices that he was doing before, which was not giving these original content creators their credit. Now the first new main exposed video would come out about two months ago and during that video Joey Bailey would show a clip of what new main sent him through the DMs on Instagram. Here's a clip of what he said. All right now listen bro you can kindly take it down and we can just be chilling. I cut out. Yeah you can kindly take it down and we can just you know be cool and move on from all this shit or you can just leave it up and uh, have a lot of enemies from here on out. Now coming back into it, it kind of seemed like Numain wants to be this evil villain of TikTok. And after Joey Bailey made a video on him, many other TikTok and YouTube creators have made their own individual videos on Kane. And even though those videos were really impactful with Joey Bailey's, it still didn't get to a point where Kane lost a bunch of followers. Just for example, Danny Gonzalez made a video on Kane two months ago, and that video would receive 3.6 million views. And honestly, I thought that was a final nail in the coffin, but it wasn't. If we take a look at Kane's page, he currently has 2.9 million followers on TikTok, and when Danny Gonzalez made his video on Numain, he only had 2.7 million followers, showing that he grew after that video. Now, this could be because of two reasons. With the first reason being that not everyone on TikTok knows about Kane and that he plagiarizes other creators' content. A lot of users on TikTok just scroll aimlessly through their For You pages, and may stumble across a video that Kane posted and found it funny, and ended up following him without knowing about the whole new main controversy. The second reason is the huge disconnect from TikTok and YouTube. Even though a lot of people watch Danny's video, that doesn't necessarily mean that they use TikTok. Even in my GeoWise video, a lot of the people that commented didn't even know who GeoWise was, so I want to assume that that is the same case with Danny's video. The biggest thing that Danny's video did do was attract people to Kane's YouTube channel that is heavily disliked. The two full length videos that Kane does have on his channel both have over 1000 dislikes, and the shorts that he posts from TikTok to YouTube all have a negative like to dislike ratio. Now if you go onto Kane's TikTok, you will see that he still pulls a lot of views to his content, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the people that watch his content like him. With comments like, nice username, where is it from, and walking L being plastered all over his comment section. Also, TikTok's algorithm is extremely advanced on putting out your content. I've said it in the past that if you want to grow on a platform, start out with TikTok first. Even though it's not super reliable once you do get started, you could always have a chance to get a hit on TikTok compared to other platforms with the way TikTok will show and promote your video.
the more people watch your video and like the video, the more it will get shown to different groups of people. But let's talk about Kane's username. In the beginning of the controversy about two months ago, Kane's username was Numain. But Numain wanted a username that was his real life first name. And as you may know, Numain is Kane's middle name. So on a live stream, he said that he was working on getting the username Kane. And the person that owned that username before Numain was inactive for a couple of years. And because of his inactivity, and because Numain had more followers and views, Numain stated that he should be able to get that username. Kane ended up getting that username, but not without the TikTok community going crazy on Numain's old account name. The majority of the comments on Kane's newer videos are all about the username and how he took it from a smaller creator. See, people didn't like how Kane obtained his username pretty much insisting that he deserved it because he was a way bigger content creator. And when you take from a little guy, regardless of how active or inactive he was, that will leave a sour taste in a lot of viewers' mouths. You see, Kane will always be a big content creator on TikTok, but that doesn't mean that he will ever be able to grow outside of that platform. People on YouTube already have a bad understanding of Kane, so when he went over to the YouTube platform thinking he was going to make a killing, that simply didn't happen. YouTube shows dislikes and shows how far gone Kane has gotten since becoming popular on TikTok and YouTube is not a place where you can copy and paste other people's content that could get your channel either taken down or demonetized. But Kane might get what a lot of viewers think he should get, which is getting beaten up by Blueface. See, this bare knuckles fighting event was really out of the blue and random to a lot of people. We actually didn't know about it until the introductory press conference when Blueface would steal Kane's glasses. That event is scheduled to take place on July 23rd, and with very little sparring video from Kane, we really don't know how good he could fight, and with Blueface stating that he isn't a fighter, just a gang member that needed to fight, that leads us to an interesting fight that many of us didn't even know was happening. I will say that Blueface does have reach over Numain, and that he has been seen sparring, or rather even fighting on YouTube, so I have to put my money on Blueface, just because of his experience with fighting as a whole. Now again, stealing content on TikTok isn't the worst thing that a person could do, but without giving the proper credits to that smaller content creator, that makes it look like you are the only one that wants to grow on the platform. Kane has a lot to think about with his career path because we never really know how long TikTok will be around, and it's a huge gamble, especially with the way Vine fell as well. If Kane continues to upload this image of stealing content and really not caring, I feel like he will never truly make a career out of what he calls his acting. At the age of 21 years old, Kane could find himself at the top of TikTok, but not really anywhere else. Now, I do hope that Kane will outgrow this style of content. Even he says that it's really easy to make TikToks and gain 1 to 10 million views off of just one. And it does suck for the creators that he is taking from because a lot of the time they don't even crack 1 million views. But because it's Numain, he already has a following, which makes it easier for him to get more views. So I would like to see him grow and understand why the majority of the people that watch his content are upset with how he has been portraying himself as this TikTok villain that really doesn't care who he hurts on his way to the top. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, and if you really enjoyed the content, consider subscribing for new content weekly. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next upload. Let me know in the comments below who you want to see next.